In December of 2019, Wuhan, China experienced an outbreak of a pneumonia-like illness, which at the time was caused by a new and unknown virus. Just three months later, in March of 2020, the virus we've come to know as COVID-19 or coronavirus has infected over 170,000 people worldwide. The rapid spread of infection across the globe has become a pandemic that has already taken the lives of over 6,000 people. Measures like early testing and social isolation have been adapted by many communities in the United States and other countries in order to slow down the spread of the virus. An estimated projection by former CDC director Tom Frieden shows the devastation COVID-19 may cause. He estimates that if the virus is uncontained, it could infect half of the U.S. population alone, killing one million people. Because this is the first time the world has ever seen a virus like this, new information is discovered daily about its origin, treatment, and prevention. Here are five of the scariest things about the coronavirus. Number 5 On Monday, March 16, 2020, the first participant in a clinical trial for a COVID-19 vaccine was given an experimental dose. 43-year-old Jennifer Holler received the first two doses of the vaccine and will be monitored for 14 months, documenting her temperature and any side effects she may experience. In an interview, Jennifer expressed how grateful she was to be a part of the solution to hopefully eradicate the coronavirus and potentially save lives. A research institute in Washington plans to further test the vaccine on up to 45 volunteers. When the National Institute of Health joined Moderna to create the vaccine, they focused on genetic engineering opposed to using the live COVID-19 virus. Because the vaccine does not contain the virus, people who receive it will not be infected with the disease and won't experience the symptoms associated with it. The experimental vaccine contains a specific string of messenger RNA that would essentially create proteins within the body that look identical to the receptors of the coronavirus. This, in turn, would alert the immune system to destroy the virus and form antibodies against it. Perfecting this vaccine and ensuring its safety and effectiveness could take up to 18 months and would be important to create genuine immunity. Because COVID-19 is a new virus, there's no way for the population to take extra precaution and get vaccinated against it like they do for the flu or other diseases. Creating a vaccine is an important step in preventing the spread of coronavirus and ensuring that the possibility of another pandemic in the future is eliminated. In the meantime, the CDC recommends that people follow the same practices they would for the flu and prevention, such as washing your hands regularly, not touching your face, and staying at home if you're sick. Social isolation, although a burden on many businesses and the community, has been implemented in many areas across the globe. This lessens the chance of exposure to the virus and may be the only way to stop the infection from spreading until a vaccine is available to the public. Number 4 Dr. William Schaffner, a professor at Vanderbilt and an advisor to the CDC, originally thought that the coronavirus was a symptomatic disease. Much like SARS or MERS, COVID-19 was believed to have been spread only by people showing symptoms. This would have likely made the virus easier to contain, but unfortunately, it was quickly realized that the coronavirus is asymptomatic and transmitted by people who showed no signs of illness. Symptoms of the coronavirus may not be present for up to two weeks after infection. This means that people who are unaware that they have the virus are going about their daily lives and unknowingly infecting other people. The CDC recommends that anyone experiencing symptoms associated with COVID-19, such as a runny nose, sore throat and fever, or difficulty breathing, stay home and avoid contact with the general population to stop the spread of the virus. This is an effective way to aid in prevention of infection, but it doesn't work when it comes to asymptomatic transmission, as seemingly healthy people are carriers for the virus and can infect people around the world. In Germany, a professional known as Dr. Sandra tested 24 people who had just returned from a trip to Israel. Seven of the 24 tested positive for coronavirus. Four of those seven had no signs or symptoms and actually had a higher viral load than the three who did show signs. This means that the coronavirus is likely most contagious before symptoms are present, if they present anything at all, making it harder to avoid the spread of the infection. Number 3 The coronavirus is believed to have started in Wuhan, China, and is said to have been spread by an infected bat to a larger host animal that in turn transmitted the virus to humans. 
It's unclear to researchers what animal the bat first infected, but speculation is widespread. Pangolins are believed to potentially be the first animal, and they're protected by both national and international law, and are the most trafficked animal in the world. Their scales are used in Chinese medicine, and their meat is considered a delicacy. Although it's illegal to hunt or trade them, they're poached and sold on the black market in many different countries. The coronavirus found in this species is over a 90% match to the virus infecting humans, meaning that it's likely directly related to the outbreak. COVID-19 is one of so many zoonotic diseases, much like rabies and Ebola the coronavirus originated from and can be transmitted by animals. As we've seen in the human population, the virus can be asymptomatic in other mammals, who may appear to be healthy while carrying the virus and infecting humans who come into contact with them. Because zoonotic diseases can spread not only by direct contact, such as touching, but contaminated water in their ecosystem, it's important to identify the species and their habitat to avoid further spread of infection. While we're focused on preventing the spread of COVID-19 between people, it's imperative that the species responsible for the outbreak is identified as well. Number 2 In 1918, a strain of the flu, known as Spanish flu, infected up to one-third of the world's population, making it the most notable pandemic in recent history. In comparison, the Spanish flu was equally as transmittable and only slightly less severe than the coronavirus. While the United States was suffering with the effects of the Spanish flu, the mayor of St. Louis quickly decided to shut down schools and churches along with other businesses and events that would bring large crowds of people together. The city experienced a plateau in the progression of the virus through the community and soon after this decision was made, new reported cases were few and far between. Not every city or state followed this protocol, however. On September 28, 1918, the mayor of Philadelphia refused to cancel the city's Liberty Loan Parade, which brought over 200,000 people together in celebration. By October 1st, over 600 new cases of Spanish flu were reported. In six months, Philadelphia buried close to 16,000 of its citizens due to the virus. If we're unable to contain the coronavirus, the CDC estimates that 160 to 214 million people may become infected with up to 1.7 million deaths in the United States alone. Harvard University expert Mark Upsich has expressed concern that COVID-19 may infect 70% of the world's population in less than a year if it's uncontained. Sporting events have been canceled, and schools across the United States and other countries have suspended classes until further notice in order to prevent the spread of the infection. Italy implemented a complete shutdown, closing all non-essential businesses until the virus is contained. Looking at history and the Spanish flu limiting exposure to the coronavirus until it's contained and a vaccine is available may be the only way to end the pandemic. Because the vaccine did not exist for coronavirus at its onset, as it's a new strain, the population was left susceptible to the disease. Number 1 The World Health Organization has reported shortages of masks and other protective equipment in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak. They've strongly urged the public to refrain from purchasing these items if they are not sick themselves or directly caring for someone who is. Healthcare professionals need items like masks and gloves to not only protect themselves, but the patients they care for. Many home health agencies do not supply these items to employees and caregivers are finding shelves emptied of the masks and gloves they need to safely perform their job. Experts agree that this form of panic buying is doing more harm than good. A lot of retail stores in the United States especially are experiencing a shortage of hand soaps, hand sanitizer, cleaning products, and toilet paper. This is due in large part to people stockpiling these products in their homes. With products being emptied from shelves at such a fast pace, retail stores are having a difficult time keeping up necessary products available to the public. A large grocery store chain in Texas has changed its hours of operation, opening later and closing earlier until further notice just to put more focus on stocking the empty shelves. Unable to purchase items like hand soap and toilet paper at local stores, many people have turned to online shopping, where many items are also out of stock or have been priced significantly higher than retail. This type of price gouging is often seen in supply and demand situations like natural disasters. In 2017, gas prices reached a two-year high when Hurricane Harvey hit the coast of Texas and Louisiana. Panicked that the disaster would create a shortage in fuel, people flocked to gas stations to fill their vehicles and all of their portable containers. 
This ironically created a gas shortage in itself, forcing many stations to close due to a lack of fuel, and supply and demand caused prices to skyrocket. Experts suggest that the fear of the unknown causes people to behave irrationally in a time of crisis, and have compared the situation to the Titanic, saying that even if the ship wasn't sinking, if you saw everyone running for a lifeboat, you would too. The CDC suggests people wash their hands frequently, cover their mouths when they cough, and avoid contact with people if they're sick. These precautions are the same precautions suggested by the CDC for the common cold and the flu. As with any contagious disease, it's important for everyone to wash their hands and do their best to eliminate any form of contamination in their homes or workplace. Despite this information and the urging from the CDC as well as medical experts, people continue to fill their carts with unnecessary amounts of the very products that need to be distributed to everyone in the community in order to aid in preventing the spread of the coronavirus. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.